Okay. So we're going to square 77. And we get 5,929. Plus B squared equals 85 times 85 is 7,225. Okay. Let's go ahead and subtract 5,929. And that'll give us B squared. And that's 1,296. And now we'll just square root that to get B. 36? So that's going to be 36 yards. So now we know we're going to compare 85 yards to 36 yards plus 77 yards. And that's 113. So how do we compare them? How do we know how much longer it's going to be taking this route? Yeah, minus 85. And that gives us 28. So it's 28 yards farther. So some of the questions, not all of them, but a good number of them, will be these multi-step questions where finding a length using the Pythagorean theorem would just be a part of what you want to do. Okay. All right. Um, let's look at number two. It says Ashton left his home and ran four miles north, uh, four miles east rather, and then three miles north, then took the diagonal path back home. He burns 105 calories every mile he ran. How many total calories did he burn? Okay. So ultimately, we want to figure out how many calories he burned. This is an old trick a teacher told me. Uh, taught me. Figure out what kind of units you want to end up with so you remind yourself that's what I want to figure out. Okay, so let's figure out his route. So he went four miles east. So this is home. He went four miles east and three miles north. And then he took the diagonal route. So we have to use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out that route. So this time it looks like we're finding C, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's find this hypotenuse. How many miles will that be? Hmm? It's five. Oh, okay. I think you're right. This is one of those special triangles. It's called a three, four, five right triangle. Three and four are the legs and five is the hypotenuse. So now we know that. So what are we gonna do with that information? We have to figure out how many total miles. How many total miles were run? 12 miles, four, three, and five is 12 miles. And then we know every mile that he ran, it was 105 calories. So let's figure out how much that is. 
1,260 calories total on his run. All right, we're doing pretty good. All right. Let's move on to number three. The Blackburn family has a square field where they keep their cattle. The area of the field is 40,000 square feet. And Mr. Blackburn wants to put a fence diagonal through the field. What should the length of the fence be? Okay. So first of all, they tell us that they have a square field. Let's draw a square. There's the field. What do they want to do on this field? What are we doing? Hmm? Yeah, diagonal fence. So ultimately, we want a fence here. And we want to know the length of the fence. But at this point, do we even know how long each side is? But we could figure it out, though. They tell us something. What do they say? Yeah, it's 40,000 square feet, and that's a clue. Remember, areas in square units. And they're telling us it's 40,000. So the space inside, it takes up is 40,000 square feet. There's a special thing about a square. What's unique about the sides of a square? What do we know? Hmm? They're all equal. So basically, length times length equals 40,000. So length squared equals 40,000. So if you want to find the sides of... of of a square and they tell you the area, the way you do that is square root. Anytime they give you the air, area of a square and you wanna find out how long each side of that square is, square root that. So what's the square root of 40,000? All right, 200. It's 200 feet. So this is 200, and this is 200. Okay. So now we know the length of the legs, right? 200 and 200. We could figure out with the Pythagorean theorem how long the fence is or the hypotenuse. So 200 squared plus 200 squared. Excuse me. 80,000 equals c squared. So now we take the square root to find out the diagonal. Two eighty two point and that's rounded to it two hundred and eighty two point what? Oh we got a little point eight. 282.8 feet. So that fence would have to be about 282, 283 almost. All right. See, we're almost done with this. Uh, let's look at number four. Martin needs to place caution tape on both diagonals of a broken rectangular door in his store. If the dimensions of the door are three feet by seven feet, how many feet of caution tape are needed? So this is caution tape, I guess. Like so. Um, we need to figure out how much caution tape. Do we know? The dimensions of this door? Yeah. Three feet by seven feet. 
So let's go ahead and figure out one of these diagonals. So that would be 3 squared plus 7 squared equals c squared. What's that, 58? So C is how much? 7.6? Okay. Is that the answer we want then? It's not the answer we want. It's getting us there though. What do we have to do with that 7.6 feet? Square root 58. Add what? Well, what is 7.6? What does it represent? Think about what it represents. Yeah, it represents one of these diagonals, but we he made a cross with a t caution tape, so we want twice that. So we want 7.6 feet times 2, 15. Yeah, because you have two crosses through that. OK. Move that up so you can see that better. Let's look at number five. Tony is building a doghouse, and the front view of the roof is an isosceles triangle. So I know it's been a while since we you learned about triangles. Isosceles means two equal sides. So 29 inches there, 29 inches here. All right. What is the height of the roof? The height is represented by x here. So do we have enough information to figure that out? All right. Now, you see this 40 inches? That's the length across. Yeah, it's not 40 inches here, guys. It can't be because if this is 40 inches, the hypotenuse is 29. You don't really have a right triangle because 40 has to be less than the hypotenuse. So it's not, it's 20. This is called a perpendicular bisector. Whenever you drop a perpendicular inside a triangle, it always cuts the opposite side in half. So this is 20 inches, and this is 20 inches. So now we have enough information. Take one of these triangles, figure out what the leg is. So basically, we have something like maybe x squared plus 20 squared equals 29 squared, because that's our height. OK. So go ahead and work on that one. I'll let you finish it up. We have uh, enough information to figure out the height x. So I'll let you finish that one up. And then I'll start talking about the last one in a little bit. Talk about it. Okay, this is this one incorporates the most steps, but I don't think it's very hard. Um, if the area of square two, here square two, is 225 square units, so they're giving us the area. 
and it's 225 for this square. Okay. And the perimeter of square one, square one's this one, is 100. So I use P for perimeter equals 100. What is the area of square three? We're looking for the area of this square. Here's the thing. We need to figure out how long this side is. In order to figure out the area, we have to figure out how long this side is. And to do that, we have to figure out the length of these two sides. But we have a little information. The area of this square is 225 units. Remember we talked about finding the length when you know the area of a square? How long is each side on this square? 15. Take the square root again. All right, so to get this, you take the square root, and so each side is 15. So now we know this is 15, okay? Here, they don't tell us the area, they tell us the perimeter. So perimeter, how do we find perimeter for anything? Add up all the sides. So these four sides added up, is 100 divided by 4. Okay, so each side is 25. So now this is 25. So now we know this side and we know this side. Let's use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out this side. Okay, so we, we have a leg basically. So I could say a squared plus 15 squared equals 25 squared. And let's use those calculators to figure out what we have. So how long is each side, or that side, I should say? What, how long is our missing side? 20. Yeah, the square root of 2, or 400, I should say. Sorry, this is 400, not 200. It's 20. Uh, can we figure out the area of the square now? We sure can. Area is actually... 20 squared, and that's 400, okay? So the area of this square is 400 unit, square units. 